Hi folks, yes, it's adventure week here on EMVN and we all know that e-mountain bikes in whatever shape or form are fantastic for those trips out, large or small. We're gonna have a look at different styles of adventure e-bike. So in typical UK fashion, it's raining in the UK early September. So whatever bike you take on your trip, don't forget to take the right kit as well. Such things as maybe a good pair of socks, a good coat, and even a thermal uh, to keep you warm in the nighttime. So adventure e-bikes, is there such a thing? Well, yes, I think there is. And I think it comes down to two things, uh, the terrain you're riding and also reliability. Now the terrain you ride, clearly you need to take a bike which is built for purpose. There's no point in you taking uh, a four to 500 off the shelf e-bike which has got poor waterproofness uh, and poor componentry such as forks which bounce up and down rather than damp you uh, or a battery that falls out. The reliability is very, very important if you're gonna go out and about for maybe a day, two days or multiple days. And we're looking at such things as the battery, the waterproofness of the bike, disc brakes, which are clearly gonna be more reliable than say rim mounted brakes. And I think at Seat Dropper, now the reason I say Seat Dropper is now I love going out and about and just wandering around the mountains. And when you're riding unseen terrain, it's really, really essential to have a seat which you can adjust the height of in an instant to keep your flow uh, through that terrain. So what uh, type of e-mounted bikes are we talking? Well, we're talking um, possibly a hardtail, a full suspension, or even a rigid uh, mountain bike, which we're gonna talk about a little later on with a company called Cairn from the UK. So if your e-bike adventure is more double track and fire track than hideously technical uh, single track trails, then maybe a hardtail might actually be a good option. And for several reasons. Now a hardtail might actually be marginally more efficient uh, when it comes to longer distances because there is a, a lack of suspension on the back. And also a lot of the time it does actually come with harder compound tires on the bike. So you're gonna get a little bit more from your battery. Also the cool thing about a hardtail is you can fit panniers to the back without the worry about having that suspension going up and down on the rear. The great thing with a bike like this, it's got a 504 watt hour battery. So you could potentially take maybe two or three of those batteries because they're about that size compared to maybe like a 630 watt hour or a 700 watt hour battery, which are a little bit more bulky. Um, this bike is a Canyon Grand Canyon, comes in uh, at less than 3000 euros. So um, yes, like I said, if the terrain is not too difficult, then you can have a great day, two days, three days. Well, you can, you can go on forever on a bike like this. And it also has a seat dropper. So hardtails then, fantastic for all kinds of adventure. But if you're really going to get involved in the mix of mountain technical single track, then you're probably gonna be looking at a full suspension e-mountain bike. Now they come in all shapes and forms, 140, 150, 160, or maybe 180 mil travel bike such as this specialized Canevo. Now don't for one minute think that a longer travel bike is gonna put you at a disadvantage because it's not. We all know that long travel e-mountain bikes can climb as well as shorter travel e-mountain bikes. Um, frame material might come into the mix because if you've got a full carbon e-mountain bike with carbon wheels, carbon handlebars and it's really stiff, then that's gonna have an effect on how tired you get during the trip because a lot of the time, those are actually meant for speed rather than comfort. So maybe an all aluminum chassis with aluminum wheels and possibly grippy tires uh, are gonna be some of the key elements uh, in the buildup of your bike. And I say grippy tires because when you're in the saddle for maybe uh, eight, 10 or 12 hours a day, then you probably will be making mistakes. So those grippy tires are gonna give you an element of control, which a harder compound tire is not going to. And also when it comes to longer travel bikes, uh, because they are longer travel, they're gonna be softer, a bit more sort of loungy. They'll probably have a big effect on your rear. Now, um, that's full suspension hardtail taken care of. Now I managed to uh, have a chat with uh, Mike Sanderson from Cairn Bikes on something totally rigid and with a range which actually blows my mind.
So we're now joined by Mike Sanderson from Cairn Bikes in the UK. Uh, but going back to my story, Mike, about ad adventures, different things, different people. Now, some people might think adventure is maybe a road such as this, yep. which then transfers into maybe a bit of forestry double track and then onto some single track. Yep. So you've got to have a bike which is suited for, for purpose, right? Yep. Uh, which brings us to the Cairn Adventure perfect name for an adventure bike Indeed I guess. It is, yeah, yeah. This is actually quite a different proposition for people going off-road to say a 180 mil travel mountain bike or a, even a 120 mil mountain bike. It's got skinnier tyres, it's a rigid bike for start. Indeed yeah. And uh, but I guess it's the range right that you get out of a bike like this. Yeah it's the range and like say when you said about adventures is like they can mean lots of different things to often different people and you know the ability to kind of ride uh, for longer distances and have a combination of mixing up tarmac like you say gravel roads a little bit of single track um, and then like I say this bike has a 650b option which enables you to even be uh, take on even more technical terrain depending on what you want out of that adventure. Yeah. So the 650b option comes with a dropper post um, but obviously if you wanted to add a dropper post to the 700C. There's cable routing for it. Um, there's also cable routing for lights, which then plug into the Fazua uh, battery as well. And I guess that's a handy part of adventure riding, right? Yeah, so again, you never know what it's going to throw to you. So obviously, if you've got lights and all that kind of stuff, the thing is all attached in, yeah. you're uh, good to go. Now, what I really, really like about this bike is the fact that you've got a small 250 watt hour battery, which you could fit in your uh, pocket, in, pocket, your, pocket your in your jersey you can also then add on a keg style mount to the seat tube here but this is the cool part you've got mounts here which means you can have a, a 250 watt hour battery each side of the fork leg which gives you a thousand watt hours and on a bike like this range well let's call it even call it 500 miles yeah so when you're actually talking adventure riding it doesn't come much more self-supportive than this, does it? No, that's the whole idea, yeah. So if again, just you can tailor the bike how you want it to be. Yeah. Um, you know, again, like we've got the, the rack uh, mounts on the back, so you can use your panniers. Obviously, you could use those front uh, to run uh, you know, pannier mounts instead of the batteries. Yeah. It's all that kind of side of thing. Uh, yeah. Mike, let's go back some more of the detail. Now, I see there's some super neat uh, cabling up front here. Yep. That's, I guess that's because uh, people are going to be carrying loads of bags on their bikes. Yeah, so you have your bar mounted bag, like kind of a roll bag style there. It just keeps the cables uh, obviously out of the way and, and not getting damaged. Um, so yeah, that's obviously one of the reasons for that. And like I say, you've got the ability to um, kind of have uh, the lights and the, the dropper yeah. post as well. And a mudguard. And a mudguard, yeah. Now, if you're going to be travelling hundreds or maybe thousands of miles, you don't want to have a wet ass. So you've yep. got a really dinky little mount there, which means you're going to attach your mudguard to. What about the modes? Now, uh, on a normal Fazua system, you have something, something and flow, or I can't... I can't. Yeah, bre <laughs> bre uh, breeze, uh, river and rocket. Yeah. Breeze, river and rocket. Now, you've, you've got a customised setup for your for your Cairn bike. Yeah, so one of the new updates from Fazua has allowed you as the consumer to update it. And what we've done is kind of come up with a Cairn specific tune. Yep. Obviously you could change that uh, back to the factory settings if you wanted to. And what we've really done there is kind of got a road mode uh, for such roads kind of similar to this, yep. a single track mode, and then a, yeah, there. and then I am just dead. <laughs> just give me everything you've got <laughs> mode where you just look at something ahead and go, I'm not getting up that without, and it's a big red button basically. Yeah. Um, so there's the three modes. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. So there you go, guys. The uh, Ken Adventure 1. Well, it's the Ken Adventure 2, isn't it? Yeah, it should be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there you go, folks. The Ken Adventure. Uh, a fantastic bike for going on those insanely big adventures. Uh, now, the Levo vs. Levo SL with myself and Georgia Leslie generated quite a lot of discussion. Uh, Matthew L2 says, I would sacrifice torque and weight for an almost quiet motor. Now, actually, this ties into the video which we did on the new EP8 motor, which there's obviously there is a, a rattle with that motor and a lot of people were quite concerned about that. But I think equally, this video does prove on the Levo vs. Levo SL how diverse the variables are when it comes to e-mountain bike. And, and Obviously, many people have different priorities uh, when it comes to buying an e-mountain bike. Some people would like the lightweight, some people want the more power. Uh, but also, I think what it does prove is you can actually go for a mixed ride with your friends of different abilities. Now, Sean Roach says, uh, always great to see Georgia, great video. I think the rider's fitness is more important than weight. 
Yes, again, another variable. Now, what's, you know, I want to know what you guys think. I mean, what about if there was a super fit person uh, weighing 100 kilos? Are they going to be faster than Georgia, who would be unfit? at 50 kilos uh i don't know get involved in the comments it's, this is uh this will be an ongoing discussion and finally eric m2 hey mbn it seems like you set out to prove the sl is as powerful as the regular lever well um I, not at all i think i think the facts are on the ground 90 newton meters 35 newton meters there's no doubt that one is more powerful than the other but like i said uh keep on getting involved in the in the discussion on power versus weight i'm sure um you know, we can con continue discussing this for decades. Oh, crikey. Oh, all these things, they, they keep me awake at night. Power versus weight, weight versus fitness, fitness versus chain stays, chain stays versus bike weight, bike weight versus color of the bike. I mean, you know, we could go on forever. Different motors, different geometries, different sizing, different brands, uh, and, and what's coming out in the future. Anyhow, don't worry guys, it's adventure week here on the NBN, and what have you guys been up to? And uh, as we saw from last week's show, an incredible amount of uh, inspirational content from all parts of the globe. And I'm going to start this week's Where in the World with um, Adam and his specialised Levo comp, who's at Yallingup. Now, I don't know where Yallingup is, is that, is that in Australia? But a uh, lovely uh, beach time beach time scene there. Yelling up, sounds like you're on a horse, but uh, you've got the horses with the waves coming in there. Now, uh, next, look at this, a beautiful Yorkshire Dales stone wall shot from um, Andrew and his ghost hybrid, uh, hybrid Teru 5.9. Uh, he says, my first e-bike and enjoying the rides across the Yorkshire Dales, loving the uphills as much as the down dales. Yeah, beautiful shot there, Andrew. Uh, and this one, this is from Kelowna in British Columbia. This is uh, in Crawford Canyon uh, downhill trail near, like I said, near Kelowna. Um, this is Garrett and he's out with his wife's bike, the road along the KVR and then down the Crawford Canyon DH. What a shot guys, what a beautiful shot, lovely rocks, beautiful backgrounds. Doesn't that just sum up what e-mountain biking is all about? But it doesn't stop there folks, a little further south in uh, on the top of Centennial Cone, uh, just outside Denver, Colorado. This is Howie and his track rail. Beautiful bit of dry, dusty action there. Uh, and then across to um, the uh, Three Valleys in France and Roel and his uh, Canyon Spectral. Nice bit of scree in the background there, Roel. Um, and then this is uh, from Leeview on his Mondraker Crafty R out in the Bukaji Mountains in Romania. Wow, look at that. That is, uh, that's pretty stunning, isn't it? Um, a little bit higher up, this is Tolly and his giant stance E in Mammoth, California. Now, Mammoth Mountain, what is it, 10,000 feet high? Pretty, uh, pretty out there place. Um, obviously, that where downhill began its, its origins. Uh, quite, di quite difficult uh, terrain to ride on all that pumice rock. And what about this brace of, um, of e-bikes here? Mondraga Crafty SE and an e-crusher Carbon XR out in Sintra in Portugal. Well, uh, I'm sure I'd like to be out there at the minute. And um, hands on his track rail in the Pont de Racis. How do you spell Pont? Pont? Is it Pont? Anyway, this is Hans uh, doing an epic climb. And I tell you, this is pretty out there stuff. But it's not all mountains. Uh, Wendy is uh, on her Merida E160 on Wallara National Park, Central Coast in New South Wales, Australia. A uh, lovely bit of beach action there. And, uh, and that is it. Is that it? Yes, it is. That's uh, three shots there from Wendy. Uh, so guys, as you can see, um, e-mountain bikes are taking us to some amazing parts of the world. So keep your photographs coming in. And uh, apologies to those of you who don't get their photograph uh, on where in the world or the bike fault, but keep them coming in. I'm sure you will get them on there one day. Okay, folks, it's bike fault time. And in all the bike fault photographs that have been submitted to EMBN, I think this is one of the finest. This is Ralph Spectral on 2018 in Bavaria, Germany. What, what a beautiful shot. It shows the bike out and about. Uh, that, that is 100% uh, super nice there, Ralph. 
Um, now this is Gord's uh, 2019 Norco site out in uh, comfortably numb in Whistler, British Columbia. That's a nice shot, it's a nice bike too. Yeah, good, nice bike and good trail too, comfortably numb out in, uh, in Whistler. This is Stephen. Uh, Stephen is on his Voodoo Zubop with uh, uh, a Shimano. This is in Firish Mountain Trails at Everton. Now, I'm afraid Stephen, I don't know what Everton is, but that is a nice shot and a nice bike too. Um, Daz's focus is in Errington Woods, uh, new mask in Teesside. That's a nice shot there, it's a um, nice colour green. Um, and Mike, Mike's high bike Exduro All Mountain, uh, enjoying the evening rides in Shibden Valley near Halifax West. Yeah, some quite difficult technical riding around that part of the world there, Mike. That's a super nice shot because it's a really nice sunset. Um, and uh, closer to home, as in closer to the house, Paul and his white E180 RS. Now, we took a brace of uh, white bikes in our recent North to South Wales trip, so don't forget to tune into that coming out on the channel on Sunday. That, by the way, is a nice shot, Paul. And uh, Joe on his Polygon Sisqui. Now, I don't actually, I haven't really seen many of these Polygon bikes uh, in the bike fold. This is out in Bel Air, Adelaide, South Australia, uh, on the rails. That's a nice shot there, Joe. And uh, another shot by the pond. And Phil, Phil has got his Focus Jam Squared 6.79 2021 model. This is in Taburi, Termale National Park, South Coast, New South Wales, Australia. That's uh, that's a nice shot, getting out and about. Lots of e-bikers in New South Wales, Australia, that's for sure. Um, and that is it for this week's Bike Vault. So that's it from this week's show. Thanks for joining us, folks. But coming up on the channel in the next few weeks, we have some massively varied content beginning uh, next week from Pietra Liguria in northern Italy, the next round of the EWSE, uh, which uh, we're going to be talking about some of the tech and some of the racing from an iconic mountain bike spot. And then after that, we've got a look for, for those of you who are still thinking about buying your first e-mountain bike, we've got a totally in-depth feature on all all the different details, the motors, the uh, type of batteries, the sizing, the geometry. So uh, don't forget to tune into that for you of you who are still in the mix on buying your first e-motorbike. So thanks for joining us folks and hopefully I'll see you with Chris next week. Bye bye.